Hello again all, let's get these wheels stuck to some tarmac. <laughs> we'll start by taking a little look at some of the assets that I'm using. I've got a track which I basically built with Lightwave CAD. It's got a couple of ramps in it just to make life a little bit more challenging. Eventually we're going to use a car but I've swapped that out for a low poly arrow so we can check we're going in the right direction. I thought it would be a good idea to show what didn't work first. Now you would have thought this technique had got spline control written all over it but uh, well it does but not in the way I was expecting. I copied and pasted my track into a new layer and sliced an edge straight through the middle and I turned that into a spline. You can see straight away in ribbon view that I've got troubles with rotations. So how do I go about correcting that? The next thing to try was curve to spline. So after doing that and making sure the headings for each node were correctly aligned. And as you'll see, there were far too many nodes in there and they were still giving me directional headaches. Even if I turned off some of those nodes that weren't needed. It's time to start proper. So let's create a new null and call it car. Let's give it a color so we can see it clearly. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna parent the arrow to that. This is so we can add additional animation to the car later on. Let's tidy up this racing track layers. Now here's a quick tip. Command space and type in create group. Type in track and it's conveniently parented all those track layers into this null here, so I can just collapse that. We will be using spline control, so let's set that up. We'll begin by creating a new null and calling it spline. Let's create another one, call it node, and we'll give it a color, and we'll parent that to the spline null. We have the base minimum for a spline here, so let's go back to the car null and we'll apply spline control to that, point it to the spline null, all is good there. We're going to start drawing our spline out now. Select the node and go to top view as it's much easier to draw stuff out I reckon. We need to decide where our spline is going to start, so I reckon somewhere around here. It's worth noting that I have the quick clone command mapped to a keyboard shortcut of option D in my case which means I can just select this, Command D, move, Command D, move, Command D. I'm not concerned about what the heading is at this point. We're gonna sort that one out later. What I am concerned about is getting the correct path that our car will travel along. So I'm gonna go quite tight in on the corners and perhaps a little bit further out on the straights. But obviously how you approach a corner is entirely up to you. Okay, nearly there with this. Let's make it a closed spline. So click on the base spline null, closed. Let's take a look at another angle and we'll see we need to add a few more nodes to this bridge. Check the scene editor is in sequence view and let's highlight. We'll change this node's color so we can easily identify it. Now I'm gonna Command D that to duplicate it and it puts it right at the bottom of the list. It's Pick that up and drag it so it's underneath and move into place. That's good. I think I need another one a bit further down. So again, duplicate, quick clone, move it into place and move it to that part of the bridge. Now is a good time to sort the headings out for each of these nodes. Let's select them all and bring up motion options. Let's take a look at their rotation. As you can see, they're all pointing down the Z and we want them to follow the path. So under the heading controller, select spline control. As you can see, they are all now nicely following the direction of the path. Bake those out by creating a keyframe. Switch these back to keyframes to save a bit of processing power. And that's the heading rotations sorted out for now. A couple of tweaks to the other bridge. So let's take these nodes and raise them above the track a little. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty good. Let's tighten up this one. Bring it in and up. Okay. For this technique to work, our spline needs to be raised ever so slightly above the track. So what I'm going to do is take the base spline null and just raise it 
ever so slightly. So as you can see, we are now above the track. Let's take another look from the side view. And yeah, like I say, it doesn't have to be far above the track. It just has to be above the track. Just turn off these spline tangents. Time to get our car or arrow moving along this spline. Create a new null and call it follow me. This is an excellent Rebel Hill technique I picked up a while back and it is perfect for this. Let's get some moves on it, extend the timeline a little bit. And I'm actually gonna use an expression here, which is quite handy and you can use on absolutely anything. Hopefully this is pretty self-explanatory. So simply type value times time and apply it to the Z position. And it's basically just using the value as a multiplier of the time. I don't need any keyframes. The higher the value, the quicker the movement. That's quick enough to get the ball rolling. Now let's apply that motion to the car. Firstly, select the car null. So press M for motion options and bring up, where is it? Follower, there we go. Item to follow is the follow me null. And we want to untick the after IK box, but we only want it influence the Z position. So we select all the other channels and none, 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 but we leave the Z position and okay that. So if we play the timeline now, we'll see that the car is following the spline, but it's following it at the speed of the follow me null. If we want to change the speed of that car null, we'll go back to the follow me, off to the Z position, just nudge it up to make it a bit quicker. All is looking good, it's time now to get that car null to stick to the tarmac. <laughs> We're gonna use an old plugin, or a good plugin. Select the track, M for motion options, and we're gonna search for sticky surface. And we're just gonna leave that on the track. And we're using the track because that's what we want the arrow to stick to. Now select the car null, and we're gonna use the sticky surfaces counterpart, and we're just gonna look for sticky. Okay that. Immediately we'll see that the car null has stuck to the track. So the sticky motion modifier will stick to the sticky surface, <laughs> sticky surface. So the sticky motion modifier will stick to an object with the sticky surface motion modifier. We'll play that through to see what we have. So it's looking pretty good. Oh, we have a jump there we can see that it's trying to stick to the part of the sticky surface above it. Time for a quick fix. Let's select the two nulls either side that make up that part of the section of track. We'll just nudge it down slightly and you'll see, you'll see it's nicely passing under the bridge now. I guess it's kind of like some sort of ray casting plugin without the headache of setting up the nodes. Everything else is looking pretty smooth. Oh, same issue here. So let's select this node and this one. Let's nudge it, nudge it down a bit. There we go, snap. Excellent. Let's smooth out some of these nodes. Now it could be that we've actually got too many, so I can just select a few and if I don't need them, just turn them off and tweak, tweak around them. That's pretty good. We're on the, uh, we're on the home straight, um, <laughs> but it's now time to deal with the speed at which we take the corners. So I'm going to remove that expression and we're going to take another approach at it. Anyone who's tried to animate the speed along a spline will know what a pain in the bum it can be. Uh, but this is where DP kit comes to the rescue. Select the follow me null and press M for motion options and we'll add nodal motion. This is why it's handy to keep the follow me and the car null separate. So let's firstly get a make vector and then we need DP kits speed time node. Thank you, Dennis. We're simply gonna plug the time output into the Z as that's the channel we're controlling. I have to admit, I didn't have much luck using the channels of other objects but it doesn't matter. In this case, we're gonna use the speed input set to constant. I'm working at 30 frames a second here. So with a speed of one means the object will travel one meter 
over 30 frames. So if I put in eight, we'll be traveling eight meters in a second. But the beauty is we can obviously keyframe this over time. So all I'm gonna do is drag the timeline to a point I want it to slow down and add a keyframe in the graph editor. So I might want it slower there, so slightly lower. So I might want to pick up in speed a little bit at that point, slow it down around here, yeah, bit then, and then, then speed it up out of that corner, and then slow it down into that corner. <laughs> I've got a lot of corners here. And then I want to speed it up as it goes up the ramp, just a little bit. Let's just say uh, we're happy with that. Hopefully you spend a bit more <laughs> a bit more time on it than I did. Assuming you are, you want to hit this store speed data to save on a bit of processing power. If you want to make changes and go back, untick that and then make changes. All this sticky surface stuff is quite processor intensive. So I find a good idea is to actually bake out the keys to get a bit of performance back. Now I've found that Rebel Hill's free animation toolbox has got a great baker built into it. So let's extend the end time and we want world position. And we're gonna bake it and sit tight until it's worked its magic. The joys of editing means that that was over pretty quickly. So let's do a bit of housekeeping, select the car null and we'll turn off the motion modifiers and we'll also untick the spline control. Don't forget that step. And we can also turn off the motion modifier for the follow me now. Now we've got some performance back, we can go back to the arrow or what will be the car and add in some additional animations. And remember that you can always go back and turn on the motion modifiers if you wanted to change the paths or the speeds or anything else. And finally, just a quick note on the scene with the cars on it. I have this low poly monster truck and here it is in layout under this null here, all turned off so it doesn't render. So under the car null, which is what I baked out earlier, I have an instance generator. Now the instance generator is set to motion path and I've just applied a number of instances with a little bit of separation. Jitter so it's not so regimented and a little bit of random offset for the same reasons. Many thanks for watching all. I hope there's something in there of use.